It always comes to this. There guys, here to do a tattoo progress update video today. I've had a few sessions uh, since the last one, but I'm just going to talk about one of them today. Um, now I'd gone over quite a while, or I guess it was probably about a month ago, uh, Terry and I had done um, the moon, the third pass on the moon, and uh, turned out quite a bit brighter. We, uh, the, I'll start with the first passes Rick and I did were, um, the first pass we used intense white or no fusion white sorry um and then the second pass we did uh intense titanium and fusion white mixed and uh we got a pretty good result and then terry he likes silverback white so he asked me if we could use that instead um he was perfectly willing to use what rick had been using but um i decided you know i like to experiment let's try the silverback Silverback had kind of almost like a pinky look to it in certain light. Here you can't really see it, but in some light you can almost see like a, a pink reflection. And so instead of that kind of yellowy color that uh, white seems to take on a little bit of as it heals and ages, um, this has more of kind of a pink look to it. Um, anyway, we, uh, we had a little bit of time and uh, so we decided, well, Terry had a pretty well full day cancellation the other day. So it was like, well, you want to do the rose? So we did the rose. It took probably an hour and a half, honestly. He uh, he packed it. Rick, uh, Rick shaded it last time. Now, I'll get into why I feel like it didn't work out last time so well. But first, I'll uh, go ahead and show it off. So this is uh, the third pass on this rose now. So again, it's, it's uh, purposely, obviously it's darker and brighter than last time. Um, though that being said, the second pass looked pretty impressive um, when it was fresh last time. It healed pretty well too. Like I will say it ended up looking pretty good. Like I have no complaints with how the second pass went in the long run. Well, I do have some complaints, but more about the healing. Um, but it still looked really good. Obviously this looks a lot better now. I feel like it's gonna look a lot better anyway. Like I think the white is gonna stay pretty bright because again, this is silverback now. Um, I don't know, I'm really curious how silverback would do on its own a first pass. I can't say that right now because obviously this is a, a third, or sorry, a second pass over. Um, that being said, a lot of this is um, the first time because when Rick did it, he just shaded the high points with white where Terry went and packed it. So where Rick treated this thing kind of like a black and gray tattoo, um, Terry treated it like a full color tattoo. So the uh, finished product will be different. Now that even when this does uh, darken, because it won't stay this bright, um, I'm assuming there'll be a lot more white in the mix than there was last time. So. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. It's almost too bright. I don't know if I would be happy if it stayed that bright, to be quite honest. But I feel like that's a good thing. If it's too bright right now, then when it does um, fade off, it'll probably be more to my liking. So yeah, it's uh, pretty as a picture right now, stamp. Um, Terry had a pretty good idea. He pulled up the, the first and second passes as reference photo for this tattoo. Uh, he screenshotted them and then uh, kind of uh, printed them off and kept them by so that he could kind of emulate Rick's style. Um, Rick, the guy who originally did, and obviously he was working on my torso and all that, he was actually there when uh, this was being done and he says to Terry, he's like, you fucking up my tattoo, son? <laughs> and Terry's just like, he's like, ah, no, no, no. But what he wanted to say was, no, I'm gonna make it better. So interestingly, um, because everybody thinks that I'm working with some wizard with Rick and I mean he is good Don't get me wrong. He's a good artist um, but um, I'm, not, I'm not taking any credit away from Terry either. He's perfectly fine as an artist, too, but 
the uh, the mastermind behind all of this and the one with the ideas for all of this has always been me. And so um, it's been important for me to work a little bit with Terry on this, um, where I've been working with Rick for the last while, just so that I can kind of prove that I can do this work with um, someone else, say Rick drops dead or um, gets injured or whatever, it's not just gonna end there. Um, Ephemeral Remy was before Rick and it will be regardless of Rick. Um, and Terry is still a pretty young artist. He's still, um, he's quite a bit younger than me and he hasn't been tattooing that long. So I wanna stress to people out there that, that are thinking that this is something that only a real badass can do or like um, you need a specifically uh, talented person to do this stuff. It's not like that, okay? People just need to be more open-minded. Now, Rick or Terry, neither one of them have ever done anything like this before. Rick has done a lot of cover-up work, but he's never done white on black. He's never done black on black. He's never done red on black. Um, where I live, first off, there aren't many people with uh, blackout tattoos to begin with. I mean, not that I think there's a, a high amount of them in any one other area necessarily, but I, I only see, I've only really seen one other guy in this city with even a little bit of blackout and his is pretty poorly done. So like this, it's not like um, there's a lot that they could have done this on, but neither one of them have uh, done any work over black before. And I've really been the first person who's even asked. So um, to anyone out there who's wondering, how do you find an artist that can do white on black or black on black or red on black or any of that crap? You just ask one. <laughs> I mean, you just ask as many as you have to before one of them's willing to try it. And I mean, if you need a, if you need um, proof that it works, just refer them to my page. This video has no editing. I don't even have a mic on this video right now. I was supposed to get a mic for this, this phone that I make these vlogs on. I had one for a little while, but my audio uh, connector in my phone is pooched. So till I upgrade my phone, you get bad audio. Um, I'm not putting a filter on this. I'm not darkening anything. I've got a light on. I've got a, I've got a light on so that I don't look dark or uh, so that the video is a little better lit. But uh, yeah, I'm just standing at the tattoo shop recording this. This is not edited. This is live action. This, you see what, you get what you see with me on my YouTube. My Instagram posts, I do edit light. I just take out, like you won't see, um, for example, you're probably not gonna see that so much on my Instagram. Well, I'm gonna smooth things out a little bit. I mean, that's just Instagram though. I, I, I kinda hate Instagram because um, Instagram forces you into that no imperfections or it won't trend kind of rule. And where I like TikTok and YouTube a bit more is video is harder to edit and most people don't edit as much. It's it's a lot more like what you see is what you get. And I'm be I'm better off in that kind of a medium anyway. I prefer that. I'm not really a fan of everything being perfect and no one has an attention span and uh, you can't talk for more than, you know, caption gives you 25, or not 25 seconds, what am I talking about? You've got about a split second to catch someone's interest on Instagram and if you, if you don't, then they're gone. So I put a lot more stake in explaining these things and showing these things with clarity on YouTube than I do on Instagram. Anyway, that was just a quick side note on that. Um, so yeah, if anyone's doubting that this stuff works or that it will work, this is fully healed. It's been done for over a month now, I would say. And it's probably gonna stay about that clear now. Now, that being said, it's the third pass. We'll probably get in there and do the black background again. Uh, I was gonna talk a bit about why the second pass didn't go well, and I have quite a bit already, but for anyone who didn't see any of those videos about these two, the second pass of these two tattoos, uh, I used a spray on bandage because I was still working in the kitchen full time then, and Rick wanted to give them a layer of protection. Even though I had a week off, whatever the case, we tried the spray on bandage and it was the second time I've tried it and now both times I would condemn the spray on bandage by, um, I think it's called um, Inky's Ink Guard. Um, yeah, never. I would recommend that to my worst enemy. Uh, I never scab ever in any of my tattoos. If I do, it's like real rare. Every part of the hand's scabbed up. 
They took two weeks to heal. Um, there were parts of them that hadn't flaked off in two weeks. And when it finally was all said and done, um, I feel like the white was darker than it should have been and the black was lighter than it should have been. And I felt like I got ripped off because I took a week off for Christmas, not just for that, but, um, and I thought this is gonna be the best time for me to heal where I work with my hands for a living and the bandage, I really do think screwed up my tattoos. So it's anyone's guess what they would have looked like otherwise, but uh, yeah, Inkies, Ink Guard, not a fan. Maybe it works for someone else. Let me know in the comments, but I'm not a big fan. There was one other thing I want to get to before I uh, wrap this video up is uh, Terry and I have already talked about what we're getting up to next. We're going to finish up these roses on my neck. Obviously this one never got the black fill last time with the Panthera. These roses were already done a year and a half ago with Dynamic, but they uh, mushed up quite a bit. So we went and we realigned and reshaded them with Panthera Black um, back in February, or is it January? I think it was January. And uh, it's pretty clear to me that Rick doesn't want to fi finish them. Anytime I bring it up, there was one time, it was three months after we finished them, I, I mentioned to him, hey, you want to get these roses again? He's like, oh, I think they're still healing, man. Okay, tell me you don't want to do them without telling me you don't want to do them. Well, that's okay. Terry's more than happy to do them. So within a month, I'm not going to quote exactly when. It might be two weeks. It might be a week. Whenever we get time and sit down, probably going to take us two and a half, three hours. We're going to do all the white and the black. They're going to be a lot like that. Uh, we're going to do the background around them and the white inside them. And yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to be dramatic difference real quick. And so I hadn't forgotten about them. I just kind of got tired of asking Rick. And Rick and I have a ton on the go anyway. So I'd rather have Rick's focus be on the torso and um, with eventually building a new chest piece and uh, into the armpits and the stomach and ribs and all that crap. And Terry and I can work away at other things, smaller things, and uh, eventually probably a sleeve together. So... It's a little fun working with two artists again. I've been a one artist man for a while and for a minute it felt like I was cheating on Rick in some way. But uh, no, it's good. It's good to be getting a little more. I'm, I've got stamina for this. I, I, needed, I needed to go a little slow for a little while, I think, but I've got the stamina to really start hitting things hard again and get, get to working on sleeves and stuff. And so it's good to have a, a younger artist to work with that's got the, the stamina for some of that too. Anyway, that's all I got to say on this one. So if you've enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Talk to you guys again soon.